Alrighty, everyone. Um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. This is Basketball Wives, episode two. Me reviewing my favorite reviewers. So this is episode two, and I am reviewing DJ Richie Sky. Love him. Uh, his attitude, his mindset. He just always on. You know, but I think this is his niche. I think, you know, um, journalism is his niche. So, I give it to him. He He's great at that. Um, and he's one of my favorites, too. Dineva was always number one. He was the reason I started watching YouTube. And then it spent off from there. Um, maybe later on in the week, I'll you know, give a bounce of who all has influenced me to do this channel. So, for that, no further ado, Basketball Wives, I guess this season nine, episode two, um, Richie gave a background and a behind the show antics on social media, which I didn't care about because, again, I just can't watch another year of this foolishness where Jennifer crawled her stupid ass right back up Evelyn's ass and OG is showing facts that she do it all the time. This is just what she do. So I, again, I ain't trying to hear this hoe. Um, I don't care to watch Evelyn try to defend her colorist ways on B. Scott. So if y'all want to watch that shit, good luck with finding it because I ain't the one that got it. I ain't even trying to hear about it. DJ Richie Scott had it in his notes and description box. So if you want to go to his page and, you know, but I'm not, I'm not doing that. Um, because as usual, like I said, I don't need to see these heifers try to jump out here and spin and fix all of their damage that they do. So I, I no. I love Richie that he does go and pull all of the show you know he gets all of it the social media as well as the behind the scenes so i love that about him um he rated the show a nine hopefully that's a good thing um basically from what he was saying jackie is narrating the show in the beginning explaining about uh how the girls are all scattered around i'm guessing this is their way of getting to from what i seen in the previews or whatever that um they're gonna all be pretty much quarantined to one house and i guess work out they bs um so jackie is like kind of explaining that um so with that she jackie is in her sacramento home uh, OG is in LA, Shawnee is in Houston, the three broke hoes are in Atlanta, that would be Malaysia, Kristen, and Jennifer. Evelyn decided she had to hurry up and move to this gated community, because wah, 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 she's so scared, um, she just showed how pussy she was, um, that you know, all her old antics of acting an ass and a fool um, proved to be that she's an idiot. So, um, she had to move into this gated community because she's so scared. Uh, I just didn't want to hear about that anymore. Um, but they did show her daughter. And from what he's saying, which I've seen some pictures of her on social media Evelyn's daughter is very beautiful. I have to give that to her. Um, I think she has started modeling. I think she was doing some... I don't know what she looks like now because I haven't seen her in a while, but I knew she had followed Beverly Johnson's daughter who also was kind of uh, a thicker... Mm, whatever. And they were modeling at the same time, I guess, for like a couple of... like Mon uh, Monif C, which is like uh, the thick size girls. So um, I don't know if she still does that kind of work, but she is very pretty. So I have to give her that. That was pretty much it for Eveline. 
uh, Malaysia and Kristen talked and they talked about Cece's um, wedding which neither one of them bras were invited to in real talk you didn't deserve to be there um, you you have us were wrong in how y'all treated that woman last year and that whole I, I call BS on that family crap y'all did that woman completely dirty and Kristen you were the worst because you threw her under the bus to try to get with the mean girl crew um, Malaysia you was just as bad you threw your best friend Brandy under the bus to get with the mean girls crew and them hoes still don't respect you they just talk shit about you behind your back um, Kristen tells her that you know she missed her at the George Floyd protest that she invited Malaysia to Malaysia explained that she still has PTSD from her brother being shot by police Richie said this was kind of a good teachable moment for her kids and police brutality. So, Malaysia, kudos to you for doing that. Um, Richie stated that he was tearing up, and I understand more than anything. And he said, you know, which it kind of made me cry as well, because you think we're in 2021 and we're still living like we're in... 1800s and you know it's ridiculous that you hate black you know the black the, the skin color is your fear so you know whatever so kudos to Malaysia for doing that one good thing um Kristen goes over to Jennifer's house and talk about OG and Jennifer, and then Jennifer, you know, how OG is um, using her discolorous thing as a, a, um, a way to get out of being, I think it was her way of basically saying, you know, OG was kind of vicious and violent. Child, whatever. Um... It's funny that she tried that because Jennifer brought up um, OG ain't no worse. I guess this is now how they're acting. Um, so I guess OG and Jennifer were kind of cool at this moment because based on the social media post um, that um, Richie showed earlier, they have been, they, they're now beefing. Um, but she was saying that OG is no more aggressive than the bitches that throw tables. Kristen tried to stop OG. And, I mean, Jennifer talking about don't call people bitches. And Jennifer tightened her up. This is my house. I can do what the hell I want to do. Dumb bitches come for you just as well. Like I said, Kristen wants to actually sit here and say, oh, I think OG is using this colorist thing as a storyline. Uh, Kristen basically said, well, I'm a brown girl, and I have never felt that way or felt anyone was treating me different. Kristen stopped not figuring out in real time that you have European classic features. You know, you have more of a European nose and your lips aren't as big there is a difference in the all the way black Nigerian young lady who has these features so I, I don't you shut up you, you sound stupid um OG met with her family and they were having dinner and she was explaining that um they have two weeks, and they're going to go and hash it out. Um, two weeks in a house, and hopefully this get-together, they can come to a common ground. But again, that was, that's wishful thinking on OG's part. Um, I just think that, you know, basically, again, you wasting your time with these sim simple-ass bitches. I'm just saying, yeah. They don't know how to acknowledge their faults. So, again, whatever. Um, you know, her family agreed. She, they hope that they can get to a common ground. Yep. Anyway, Richie is right. They don't. He said the same thing I just said. They don't know how to acknowledge and be accountable 
for their actions. So there's no way that they're going to be able to, you know, come to a common ground. So I hate that this girl is going to hope for something that is never going to come true. Um, even if they do decide to come to a common ground on my TV, they're going to continue they fuck, fool of fucking negatory shit. Shout out to Roxanne. Um, because they're a bunch of liars. And, you know, I, based on what he was showing with the earlier tweets and IGs and all of that from social media from yesterday, the night before, during the show, the, the shit still goes on. Anyway, so, you know, uh, Richie did ask a question at the end, so I wanted to answer it. And he said, he his question was, do we think there is a color race issue on this show? And my answer is a hard yes, as well as maybe just a little personal note. I'm a brown girl, as you can see. I might not be as brown, as dark, as OG, or even, you know, some other girls that's been on that show. But I'm a brown girl. Um, and one of my closest cousins, she's very fair in complexion. So, although I love um, that we are like, the salt and pepper of our family, you know, me and her are close, but there are times that I feel like people, not family, but people on the outside has taken like colorist digs at me. And it, it is because I'm browner. Um, I actually am very assertive, which people tend to always say, you being aggressive. Um, no, I'm just being real with you. I'm going to tell you how I feel. If you met my cousin and she did the same thing, no one would say anything. But she's a little more rough, hard than I am. I'm a little heavier. So, I'm, you know, people call me thick, you know, so... In in the back of my head, I know everyone in the world isn't colorist, but I also know there are colorists out here in these streets. And, um, again, this show proved that colorist is going to be here. And I hope this isn't the tone of this show, but I'm not watching, so it ain't, I don't care. But... That's the scary part, because if this is going to be the full tone of the show, it's not even going to be worth watching. Um, I don't like that they keep trying to sugarcoat it. And in, in that meaning, we're going to PR and stunt and move like, I would never do that. I got black kids. I date black men. Y'all are fair skin women who you wouldn't, I mean, Evelyn, again, you talking aggressive, have thrown full wine bottles at people's head. Nobody's called her, nobody's called her aggressive, not once. Ran across the table to try to jump on somebody. No one's called her aggressive. The only time... Before now, I've seen this fake-ass Negro called Evelyn. And I can't even, this fake Puerto Rican was when she backed down because Tammy was going to tap that ass. But other than that, every season, Evelyn had shown her natural ass. And now you're scared of OG because guess what? OG bought that life. She's a foot ex football player. You gotta have aggression on that field. So 
miss me with this song and dance. I hate to hear about it again. I'm happy that they getting you together. Um, but I don't, I do think the show is, has a colorist race issue slant. It just proves though, with that being said, that I'm going to say this, the issue more or less it goes beyond just a colorist race issue. It just proves that that age old saying that black men get in the NBA and get money and then they run to a white girl. I think it's time for like some of my favorite players, they got girlfriends. Like I'm not I'm not a great fan of his basketball but LeBron James his woman that's a brown girl I I like that Ben Wallace a brown girl I love those aesthetics I can't stand to see somebody overly dark with a real 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 fair or another race skin because it's like you're running away from your own complexion, your damn self. Um, but I, again, I, I can say the same thing about myself. It's not considered colorist, but I only date men that are very much darker than me. Um, I think I've dated or liked two guys that were fairer in skin tone, but again usually what I attract to are the brown guys. So, yes, I do think that's the case, DJ Richie Scott. And that is that. Um, I'll see you guys next week. Um, I'll figure out who I will be uh, reviewing next week. Um, like I said, I'll give you all a rundown at the top of the week of who all my favorite reviewers are. And then I'll pick one from that group. Um, sorry for the ums. Just please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all later. Bye.